Hello everyone, let's look at this limit here. We have this limit problem, x cubed minus 27 over x squared minus 9. So that's a rational function. And we want to find the limit as x approaches 3, what this function is approaching to. Okay, so usually when we start a limit problem, the first step that we are going to do is to try to plug in the number and see what's going on. So this this is called direct substitution. And so if we try that, let's try direct substitution right here. And so what we are going to do is that we are going to just write down the form of the function, right? So that's x cubed minus 27 divided by, and then x squared minus 9. So what we are going to do is to plug in this 3 into the x's, right? The blanks right here. And then we try to do a calculation and see what kind of um, form that we have. And if we run into an indeterminate form of 0 over 0, then we are going to try a different technique for finding the limit. OK, so if we do the calculation right here, as you can see, 3 cubed is 27. So we get 27 minus 27 over, what do we get at the bottom? We get 3 squared, which is 9 and then minus 9. And so as you can see here, the numerator is approaching 0. The denominator is approaching 0. So we get an indeterminate form of 0 over 0. This form <clears throat> is just saying that the numerator is getting small, right? And then the, uh, the denominator is also getting small, right? It's getting close to 0. So if you take the uh, <clears throat> if you take the two numbers and you divide them, what happens is that we actually have no information which one will win in this case so if the if the top number it's getting to zero faster than the bottom number then um you will you will get a certain limit and then if the if on the other hand if the bottom number is getting uh to zero faster than the top and then you will get a different limit and in that case you also need to worry about the sign because um this does not indicate the direction as how x is approaching 3. So x can either approach 3 from the right or from the left. And in this case, the, the top and the bottom can actually be approaching 0 um, either from the right side or the left side. So sometimes uh, the bottom number, number and uh, as well, the top number can be negative or they can be positive, right? So there are a lot of things that we need to worry about here. So what do we do with this problem? Um, what we can do is that we can try to factor it. Okay, so we see that that's a polynomial. That's also a polynomial, right? So they're both polynomials and see if we can factor them and see if good things will happen when we factor. So let's try it. And we just realized that um, the numerator is the difference of two cubes. And in that case, we do have a formula for uh, factoring difference of two cubes. So let's just recall. Let's just recall that. And so if we are recalling the difference of two cubes, that's when you have um, an expression, right? A and then cube minus, and then the quantity B and then cubed. And so what do we get here when we factor this? Then we are going to be getting A and then minus B, and then it's A squared plus AB and then plus B squared. So that's how we can factor the difference of two cubes. And it's factored into these two factors. One of them is a binomial, and then the other one is a trinomial. OK, so we are going to do that for this expression right here. So let's do that. And if we're doing that here, then in the numerator, we actually can say that the x is the a in this case. And then the 27 is the b cubed. So the b is actually a 3 for this problem. OK, so actually I can um, do a little bit more scratch work right here just to show. So as you can see here, that's actually what it's x right here. That's the it's x cubed, right? So we get x cubed and then x is the same thing as a, as you can see here. What about the 27? The 27 doesn't have a cube right here. So it, we're saying that the b cubed is 27. So in this case, we got to find something that when we cube it, we are going to get the 27. And what is that something here? That something must be 3. And so if you cube the 3, you are going to get 27. And so b cubed is the same thing as 3 cubed. And so b in this 
problem would be uh, three. And so now you can factor it because we figure out the A, we figure out the B, right? So now we can start writing down the result over here. So the first factor is going to be A minus B. And so A is X and B is three. So we get X minus three is the first factor. So we have X minus three. Okay, so that's uh, the binomial. And then now the trinomial, we are going to square the A. The A is X, right? So square it you are going to get x squared. And then now following the formula, we get the plus sign right here, plus, right? And then the a times the b, we know that it's just what, x times three, so we get three x. And then plus, right? So we put the plus here. And then now the um, the b squared, so b is 3, so you square the 3, which will give you a 9. Okay, so now that's how we factor uh, the numerator. And so we are going to factor the denominator, that that's the, that's the what, that's the difference of two squares. And that also has a formula for you to factor. So we are going to write it as a square minus b square. In this case, so a square minus b square. And that's being factored as a minus b and a plus b. Okay, or a plus b a times a minus b. The order doesn't really matter here for, for how, which one that we put first. Okay, so now um, just putting that right here, the x squared minus nine, we are gonna put it right here just to match them. And so we are going to be getting what something square minus something square, and then we gotta put in the x in here, just like how we did it for the difference of two cubes. Okay, so x is the a is x, right? Okay. Now, what about nine? The nine, there was no square here, right? So that's really just saying that the nine is actually equal to the b square. And so we just need to figure out something that when we square it, we are going to get the nine, and that something will be three here. Okay, so we get three. So as you can see here, three square gives you the nine, and so b is equal to three. Okay, so now we are ready to do the factoring here. It's a minus b, a plus b. So that will be easy, right? And then we are going to be getting what? X minus three here, and then X plus three. Okay, so we factor the numerator, we factor the denominator, and then we are actually seeing something that's nice here. Do you see that there was a X minus three here? There was a X minus three here, we can cancel them. And then you may say, <clears throat> if we plug in the three in here, then that's zero. And when we are doing the canceling, that's basically dividing. Can we really be dividing by zero? We are actually not dividing by zero because when X is approaching three, that's saying that X is not equal to three, right? It's getting closer. It can be either uh, approaching three from the left side. That's that's like 2.9, 2.99, 2.995, 2.999, right? And so on. Or it can be approaching three from the, uh, from the right side. Did I say right side or the left side? I don't know. Okay, so now if it's approaching three from the right side, then it's three point, zero zero one three point zero 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 five all right and then three point zero 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 that's a lot of zeros okay yeah um three point zero 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 one maybe okay what happened is that when x is approaching three then x minus three is not going to be zero so that means we can just cancel them right let's just cancel them because we're not dividing by zero in this case. Okay, so what happens is that when we when we finish with the canceling here, then the, we get a new limit problem here. And then the good thing is that those two, the new limit problem and the original limit problems are using the same limit. And then, <clears throat> And so I should just point out one thing right here is that when you go back to this problem, right, from the beginning, when we did the direct substitution, you see why we're getting zero over zero. It's really because of those two factors. It's not coming from here, the, the stuff that's left. It's actually the X minus three, okay? And so once we cancel them, when we plug in the three, we are not going to get zero over zero anymore. 
And so, oh, I just realized that that should be a plus, right? So this would be a plus nine. Yeah, so you can see that it's, right now we can actually uh, figure out what the limit is, what this function is approaching to. It's really because we don't get that indeterminate form anymore because we cancel them. And so right now, all we need to do is to directly substitute the three in there, then we can get the answer. Okay, so if we do that, And actually, we don't need to write this limit notation anymore. Um, this is something that I should just point out here is that by the time that you start substituting the number in there, you do not really need that to rewrite that the limit notation with the x approaching um, a 3. So we don't need to write that anymore. So all we need to do right now is to substitute the 3 in there. And then do the calculation. And so what do we get here? What do we get here? We are getting, um, so we can see that we are getting 9 plus 9 plus 9. We are get, adding three nines together. So we are getting, what, 27, right? At the bottom, what are we getting? We are getting 3 plus 3, so that's a 6, right? So now reducing this fraction here because 3 goes into both 27 and 6, we can reduce the fraction. So after reducing it by 3, we are going to get 9 over 2. And then we're finished. So the function is approaching 9 over 2 as x approaches 3. OK, so um, this is the major work for finding this limit. But there are a lot of uh, out of scratch work that we need to do, right? We, we should always just try the direct substitution and see the behavior of the function before we decide what to do. So we cannot really um, always just just try, um, try to factor stuff because maybe you do not even need to factor. If you're not getting in determinate form by um, by substituting the three in there, then you would get the limit already. So there is no point to do all this work, right? If it's an eight right here, for example, then when you plug the three in there, then you're not going to get zero over zero, then you already get the limit. So it's unnecessary to do work. Yeah, so it depends on the problem. So all we need to do when we're doing math problems, it's really important that we need to be flexible. Yeah, okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and then leave me a comment, give me a like, and then also please help me share my videos to other people. Thank you for watching this. I will see you next time.